It belongs to you us. You can't see nothing. You can't hear nothing. You, you can't, can't smite nothing. nothing. It's the jungle, baby. Uh. When you're up in the jungle, you need animal instincts to demonstrate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to the Leecraft GG Classic. This is the sixth day of broadcasting this amazing tournament, and we are bringing you a match that was postponed from last week due to what I guess is worldwide internet issues. Nothing else could say anymore. Team Legion versus Team Fortna. Of course, last week you had Bup Bup But I Love You and Spazzy casting for you, but they couldn't make this slot. So my name is Optimus Tom, and of course, I am joined by the amazing rapid what's going on man hey man what's up glad to be back for game three and uh, if you guys missed the first two games definitely go check them out but uh, if you guys want a slight spoiler then it is tied one to one this is game three the first game it was really close but Legion just coming back from a deficit hammering at home and taking down the win and then uh, for definitely came back in the next game bringing us to this awesome game three so we are into picks and bands right now and hopefully we'll, we, we will be able to uh, stop postponing you guys and and uh, get into a pretty awesome game. Yes, indeed. I don't know about you, Rapid, but I am so glad they postponed it because we get to cast. These are two awesome teams that I have been watching for a very long time. I know you have been, too. And I'm just super, super excited that we get to cast them. And this is the deciding game to see who is going to move on into the tournament, into the round of eight. We'll be finishing up the round of eight, the semifinals, and the finals all conglomerate into one massive, awesome championship Sunday for the League Craft GG Classic. But as you said, we have picks and bans going down. So, Rapid, why don't you start us off by going down who each team is banned out? All right, so for Legion, uh, we're going to have bands be Kog'Maw, Cassiopeia, and Morgana. And that Morgana band is directed straight at game one of the previous series that these guys played just because Kramer 1-2-1's Morgana is... It's, uh, there was a point where Morgana popped a Black Shield and ate a Taric Stun, a Twisted Fate Stun, and uh, an Ash Arrow. And it's just like she absorbs so much and her ults were just on point. And they definitely don't want to deal with that this time around. Also, he plays a really wicked Cassiopeia. So they're taking that out of the game and then also removing Kogma because A, he's really good AP so Kramer could do that. And B, they just don't want to deal with that heavy, heavy poke. So they're definitely going to go for some sort of a strategy where that would not be uh, too, too great for them kind of like a push strat that really kind of gets uh, destroyed by that. On the other side, for four not, we have Kennen, Janna, and Lee Sin being the bands. So Janna, definitely number one OP support, and uh, just makes it way too easy to run move speed junglers like Lata Morris is going to run in Shivana. And then Lee Sin, just a really strong jungler, and Kennen as well, also pretty, pretty strong once you have Janna and Lee Sin out of the way. Yeah, and you definitely don't want Prolly picking up that Kennen. He has a mean Kennen game. <laughs> if you watch any games he's played in previously, that's probably, I'd say, uh, going out on a limb and say that's a targeted ban at him because his cannon just could be pretty ridiculous when he does get his hands on it. But like you said, Lee Sin and Janna also being perfect, perfect bans. Janna going with the Moose Speed jungler in Lotta Mortis' Shivana now. Shivana has been known not only for her prowess in the jungle, but her prowess in the enemy's jungle. So we could see uh, Shivana going either side of the jungle, just really that counter jungle game, being super, super strong. She's able to harass down top lanes and middle lanes with ease because she's constantly moving around. Burnout gives her bonus move speed, and it looks like Legion's also picking up a Nunu. So Nunu going to have that blood boil increasing attack and movement speed. This Shivana's going to have to have, you know, like a police gun on her to see if she's going over the speed limit or something through the jungle. <laughs> Man, yeah, she is definitely one of the fastest junglers out there next to something like uh, Dr. Mundo or maybe even an Udyr. 
Um, but uh, really, after you see a Kogma band, and then still with the Nunu pickup, you're going to be looking for something like an Ezreal pickup. And Ezreal definitely has the same degree of poke as somebody like Parole picking up his Caitlyn over there. So uh, we could possibly see that Ezreal come out to uh, counter just the insane range of Caitlyn. I believe she has like a 650 auto attack range, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But uh, those skill shots from Ezreal have even more range. So uh, we're going to see what uh, actually uh, they opt to give to Demon Lull. If you guys aren't familiar with both of these teams, I'll go ahead and run down exactly who plays what. Demon Lull is actually a new addition to their team. He's going to be running bottom lane. Arknight 14 he used to play bottom lane, and then they switched him up to top lane, but apparently he is not able to be here with us, as is uh, Inubish, their normal support. So, uh, sitting in for both of them will be uh, Wings of Death, who actually used to play 14 Dignitas, and uh, then LGN Reaper is actually their manager, and he'll probably be picking up that new new support, uh, just because he's not really well-defined for any particular role. Um, although he does stream a lot, so you guys should definitely go check him out. For 4 not. Uh, they've actually had a lot of uh, switches up with their roster as well. Uh, you see Dan Din is now playing for them in the jungle. They used to have a guy named uh, Mashigaren, who's actually ranked top 5 NA solo queue. And uh, after, before that even, I believe they had a guy named Hacker back from their League Craft days. Both of these teams have actually also changed names. Fornot used to be the majority of a team sponsored by League Craft, who also has a lot to do with our fabulous tournament now. And uh, Legion used to be known as Team Reflex, competed in MLGs, just a really solid team out there. So now that you guys have that background, we're about to see the last uh, pickup here for Fornot. They have 20 seconds, so in those seconds, why don't you tell us what your, uh, what your pick is going to be here, Tom? Let's see here. It looks like they're going to be going for a top laner. And ooh, they're wanting to pick up an Udyr. I was going to say that Olaf is in a very, very strong top lane choice, especially with that Lee Sin out of the way. But going for a very sustainy, tanky pick like an Udyr in the top lane, not a bad choice on either. They definitely looks like that Reflex is going to be, or I'm sorry, I'm saying Reflex on their Legion now. You can see it's just been a recent, recent change for us. But uh, Legion is probably going to be playing that top lane game, playing with Shivana in the jungle. So picking an Udyr choice is never going to be a bad thing because he's going to be able to pop that shield and sustain against Gangplank. Gangplank's really not going to be able to harass with those parlays, and it's really going to be all just a farm fest top lane. And I think Udyr might even come out and ahead in that lane when you see that uh, he's going to be putting points in the tiger stance, popping that bonus magic damage on the first strike, dealing it damage over two seconds. A lot of people seem to forget that Udyr does a lot of burst magic damage and go for things like Ninja Tabby and armor against him. So hopefully Legion is keen to that game and decide not to really go for too much of a commitment to armor when Udyr is going to be popping tiger stance, probably maxing that before even turtle stance in a lane against gangplank yeah and uh, i definitely should have seen the uh, the maokai coming out for uh, dan din if you guys look at his uh, his rank stats he has been playing maokai for pretty much every single tournament he did it all the way through four knots run through uh the last go for lol that they did he's also been running on a lot in their uh, eps uh esl pro series um well, actually i think it's the ens esl major series but definitely loves playing uh that Maokai and has been doing it quite a lot recently. So it looks like, yeah, Wings of Death will pick up one of his strongest top laners in Gangplank. Something you don't really see anymore. He's really strong after CLG popularized him, I believe, at Dreamhack. But uh, with a 59% win ratio, I'd take just about any champion top lane. Yeah, definitely would. But that gameplay pick, like you mentioned, we don't see him as often as we did before. He's not exactly the overpowered character we used to know, mainly because of the ever-changing dynamics of the top lane game. But the rest of the picks, we see that Prowley is going to be going in the middle with Rise up against Kramer 121's Twisted Fate pick. Now, I don't know about you, but both of these champions have abilities that can harass each other down. They have abilities that are going to root each other in place. And then they have their third ability where Rise is going to be reducing magic resistance and then hitting like a truck as well as the bouncing back and forth. That's going to pair extremely well with his ultimate, which would be giving him spell vamp. And then Twisted Fate just has the extra magic damage proc, but he does also have his ultimate, which is going to be able to move him around the map and set up ganks. So if we see Dandan running Maokai, I could be expected four-man ganks on the bottom lane when Twisted Fate hits level six. Yeah, one of the things that you're seeing is that every single lane has heavy, heavy CC in that lane, whether you're talking about Alistar bottom lane or top lane on Dr. Trevor's Udyr. So they're going to be able to assist with those uh, those Twisted Fate ganks and uh, just make them really, really strong. Uh, as far as uh, Legion is concerned, 
Uh, you, know, you mentioned the uh, matchups between Prolly and Twisted Fate mid lane. I believe I'm going to give that to Prolly just because A, he plays a ridiculous rise. Although Kramer's uh, Twisted Fate is definitely his, I believe, third most played champion. So there's definitely going to be a lot of contestation going on there. But uh, as tanky as Rise gets as early as he gets, I think that it's going to be a little bit close. Um, but I'm going to have to give that one to Prolly. Oh yeah, definitely in the straight up lane matchup, I would give it to Ryze almost every single time, no matter who is playing what. But I think the real versatility is going to lie in the fact that Twisted Fate can teleport in on a gank in the bottom lane just basically by going into the river from middle lane. And with Dan Din's Maokai with that Twisted Advance and all the crowd control that you're going to see out of the jungle, that's going to be a very, very devastating thing for the bottom lane. Graves and Nunu are going to have the movement speed to get out of there, but there is no sustain on, really, on Reaper's Nunu support. He's not going to be able to heal up as much as an ally. Star would be, and he's definitely not going to be able to heal up like a Sona or a Soraka would be in the bottom lane. So constant harass coming out of the jungle and middle lane could really turn the tide for the bottom lane in favor of Four Not. Definitely. If you go ahead and check out the CS or the CC for both teams, it is uh, really light on CC for Legion, really heavy on CC for Four Not. So I don't know. I'm definitely going to give CC a big, a big thumbs up as something you should pick up for your team comps. It looks like Four Not got that memo and will be uh, going for a really CC heavy team. So uh, looks like we're going to be able to get into this game. Spectator mode has finished its delay and we're going to start loading in to uh, game three between Team Legion and Team Four Not. Yes, indeed. But this is a great time to give a big thanks to our sponsors over at Stack Exchange Gaming because without them, we wouldn't be able to run this amazing GG Classic tournament and bring you guys the best amateur and professional teams from North America has to offer. They host an awesome question and answer website for video games of all stripes, not just League of Legends, but tune in for StarCraft 2, Skyrim, Mass Effect 3, and any other game you can dig up out of your grandma's NES archive in her attic. You know she has one up there. If you have a question about any game, head on over to gaming.stackexchange.com to get a quick and thorough response and if that didn't pique your guys interest enough we have an amazing contest going on from our sponsors over there at stack exchange they're going to be giving out free monitors and solid state drives this weekend rapid i don't know about you but i had to pay for both my monitors and i don't even own a solid state drive so i am jealous Definitely things I could use. Uh, go over to gaming.stackexchange, ask and answer a question over there, and if your question is the most asked or answered, uh, they will definitely throw one of those your way. So uh, stop over by gaming.stackexchange.com, and uh, besides asking and answering lots of questions, make sure to thank them for sponsoring the $5,000 prize pool for this tournament. So I'm going to go ahead and get things started over here. Uh, this is going to be Game 3 between Team Legion and Team 4 not so both of these teams right around the same ELOs, same levels, uh, definitely have their own superstars involved between, you know, Wings of Death and Prolly, and, uh, you know, Dan Din on 4 not as well as, you know, the uh, demons that are Demon Lull and uh, Parole. Uh, both are going to be matching up against one another bottom lanes, so you got a lot of stories going on. This is the final game, the deciding game, the game that is on the line for both teams for their lives in this tournament. And uh, I don't know, it should be pretty hype, if you know what I mean, Tom. It's definitely going to be hype, and it looks like it's going to be aggressive out of the get-go, as Fortnite is going for a very aggressive jungle invade. Legion knows exactly where they are, but they have a lot of crowd control. Like you said, right at the gate at level 1, probably is going to eat a cupcake, which I don't advise doing when the enemy team is just is just staring at you outside of that bush. Twisted Fate already has a gold card ready and prepared, and it seems that Legion is going to surrender their red buff to the early aggression from Forna. Now, Dan Din, normally on Maokai, you have to start laying down the saplings a lot earlier than he is now, but it looks like with help from his team, he's going to be able to counter jungle these rates and probably go straight for their red buff, or is he perhaps going to fall back to his blue buff? Because Maokai is going to need a blue buff, but it seems they're going to steal the red buff for Maokai and from the jungle of Legion before they head back to their own side of the river and secure blue buff for Dan Din's Maokai. Yeah, and actually you can see that Demon Lull and Reaper are actually going to try to contest this. They see what's going on, but they're not exactly sure where that red buff is. They just know that it has been taken there, and that will actually go ahead and uh, get picked up there. So Dandan's going to have an early red buff. You don't see any sort of counter jungling by Lattimore. He did opt to use his smite, so he will be going in for a level 2 gank. He's going to wrap around here, and actually, will he go for the gank, or is he just going to try to... Yeah, he's going to head over to Double Golems, take those out, and run back to his own jungle. So... Uh, you know, he's good. 
Bottom lane, we have that early gank from Dan. Dan, as he came with a twisted advance and a pulverize coming out of Bloodwater's Alistar, but a very nice flash is able to save the Mumla with barely any HP. So Reaper doing a good job making sure that he's giving him that blood boil to get him out of there as soon as possible. They actually wound up snaring him over by the tower, so it was an unsuccessful gank on bottom. Meanwhile, we see some aggression from Dr. Trevor on top. That's going to prompt Lot of Mortis to come in and gank with that Shivana who was counter jungling. The counter jungling was it the small gold ones up top there? I don't know, as the thing is still up. Maybe she left one to wait for a little respawn in the pattern, but mm -hmm. no gank is going to be coming for any avail for either Forna or Legion. But like I said, aggression from both sides right out of the get-go, Rapid. So these guys are here to entertain us. Yeah, and Lot of Mortis is not letting up. He's going to jump once again back in on to Dr. Trevor, who's dropping down ridiculously low and also has the flash out of there. Uh, didn't want uh, Gangplank to get off that clutch parley just in case it has a crit chance and uh, if we go ahead and check out Gangplank's rune as far as crit plants crit chance he has a zero percent crit chance not running any sort of you know that one crit chance per level rune in there just for <laughs> lulls no no critical strike coming out of his rune page they took that out of the mastery page a little while ago as pretty much anyone who plays league of legends knows so that variant is gone but bottom lane dan din is going to be as relentless as lot of mortis was on top Twisted Advance going into the tower range onto Reapers, so it looks like they had to pop a heal. Was that going down? I don't exactly know, but there was a summoner spell used, and Dan then took a couple tower shots. I don't think he wanted to take, and is he going to uh, recall? He is forced to recall. Having his double buffs, though, he's going to go back, probably pick up a Philosopher's Stone, and then continue in on his jungle pattern. But if he decides to go up into his top jungle here, he's going to be severely disappointed as Lot of Mortis has taken up camp, and it looks like he's just squatting in Dan Din's jungle right now. Yeah, he is sitting in there. He's actually really low right now, not able to counter jungle that red buff. So I don't know. That was definitely something that will sit him far behind. As, uh, and, you know, Shivana is really that strong counter jungler. And this happened to them the very first game between uh, Legion and Reflex. A lot of Morris ran into the jungle to try to counter jungle, but wasn't able to finish the red buff because he dropped so low. So already we're seeing things shape up like we did from the uh, the first set between these two. This is the third set, and uh, things go similarly, then we could see Legion pull out a win, but uh, this is a new game. Both teams have a fresh start at this, and uh, with the way things are going, it looks like, uh, I don't know, it's uh, really close so far. Small gold advantage here for four not, but top lane, Dr. Trevor and Wings of Death are going hard in the paint. Both of them below 100 health and still in lane with one another. This is ridiculous. But Dan Din might have something to say, I guess, about this. He is coming in through the lane. He's in the second bush. And a flash snare could go ahead and get up, pick up the uh, kill there. The sapling is tossed on top of Wings of Death. But he will get out of range of that. So Dan Din's presence is made known. And that's going to signal Wings of Death to be really careful in lane. All it takes is one flash stun, one twisted advance and that is going to be plenty enough to pick up the kill on wings of death he's going to eat a sapling here and actually uses his uh, oranges to go ahead and uh, heal back up to around 300 health so that's going to give him a solid advantage except that oh wait turtle stance is ridiculous and <laughs> 500 health udir already yeah, it's actually very interesting to see that Wings of Death is leveling up those oranges on Gangplank. You normally would see him leveling up the Raise Morale or even leveling up the Parlay just to be a little more harassment oriented and get a lot of CS in that lane. But against an Udyr, he's often to level up those oranges to just heal up more. So after those engagements go back and forth, as you said, we saw Bolton getting to about 100 HP after trading blows left and right with each other. Leveling up those oranges to try to match the sustain of Udyr's Turtle Stance in lane, but unfortunately, not a lot match the sustain of Turtle Stance, especially when that Lee Sin was banned out in the champion select. So Udyr, I think he's going to come out ahead in that little sustenance war against the Gangplank. Definitely, and especially since the shield from Turtle Sands blocks the Gangplank Q harass, there's not a whole lot that Gangplank can do other than just try to farm as much as he can. Instead of going more of a passive farm lane, though, he's decided to pick up a Doran's Blade, which is definitely a more aggressive item and something that's, uh, I don't know, it's its definitely that early game kind of lane dominance that you're looking for, and I think that's what Gangplank's going to need in order to uh, be able to continue to trade effectively uh, with Dr. Trevor's Udyr. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you 100% on that. When the rest of the lanes, though, we saw Shivana looking like she was poisoning the gang into the middle lane, then decided to actually recall while in that bush to just deter a gank against Ryze. Ryze, in the meantime, is going to recall, taking a quick look at his gold. He has more than enough for a catalyst or that tier of the goddess. He is going to opt for catalyst first, and we're going to see him returning to lane with a lot more sustenance than that um, Twisted Fate, who does have double door answering, though, so he's no squishy AD AP carry in the middle right now with those bonus HPs. We see Danton coming through the jungle, not even realizing that 
lot of mortises is over at this red buff. He wants to get another gank down on Damunlo on Reaper, who have evaded all choices of death from Fornot's ganks on the bottom lane. But here we go. Bloodwater is coming in through the bushes. He could get a headbutt pulverized combo down. He is going to get it down onto Reaper. Then a delayed twisted advance is going to stick Reaper out of position from that tower. But he is barely alive. Caitlyn, though, <laughs> flashing in for the kill. But uh oh, she may walk right into Lot of Mortis here as Graze is continuing the pressure. A heal goes off. Bloodwater and Parole are very, very low. But there's that twisted fate ultimate I was talking about from the middle lane coming in and turning that gank around on its head. A gangplank ultimate comes down a little bit too late here, but it is currently two for one on that bottom lane. Four for not, and they are looks like they're gonna be okay. There is a rise slowly trotting in for the middle lane, now realizing that oh man, twisted fate left lane. Maybe I should follow him, but staying around a little too much. A flash and a rune prison go down as parole overstayed his welcome. He is going to fall to Prolly's rise. Graze is just kiting around as the Mumla is gonna fall to Dan Din's Maokai. That lets Rise pick up a kill, and now it's just basically the middle lane on the bottom. Crazy dies there. You saw Twisted Fate get down there as fast as he possibly could. Gangplank all getting every single person down there really low for uh, for not. And uh, I don't know. They definitely stuck around just long enough for probably to come back in and pick up those assists. And by assists, I mean kills as he is now 2 and 0. Oh, whereas uh, the kills for for not are going to Caitlyn. It's 2 and 1 and 1 and 1 to Dan Din. So uh, 3 and 3 are the kills that puts them, well, both teams pretty even. Only a 400 gold difference separate both of these teams and as we approach the 10 minute mark it's still just as even as it was when the game started yes indeed it is but now that rides with two kill advantage in the middle lane as you pointed out that's gonna be a little bit harder for twisted fate to overcome as we said rise went back and got his catalyst he now has just gone back and completed his tier of the goddess just about a minute and a couple seconds after picking up that catalyst so twisted fate still only with double doran's ring has a couple wards to keep him protected from any gangs from shivana and any shenanigans that might go down but he has opted to pick up a couple more health potions and on top of this rise with the catalyst with the tier of the goddess now a blue buff and a red buff so now now Kramer's really going to have his work cut out for him in the middle lane, but top lane seems to be the real story right now. As Lot of Mortis is coming down with an ultimate as Winds of Death popping down those parlays with the Grog so Blade is going to slow Dr. Trevor, but not enough for him to be picked up as a kill as he's going to fall back to his tower and recall pretty much unscathed after a couple scratches from Shivana out of the jungle. Yeah, Dan is going to go over there just looking for Shivana. He's going to attempt to counter jungle a little bit, but probably is guarding his rays with the utmost of care. And uh, Shivana is actually going to go around and do the same thing. It's actually the exact same situation on both sides of the map, except that uh, Dan Din was successful and uh, a lot of Mortis was chased out of there by Kramer 1-2-1. Bottom lane is trying to be as aggressive as possible, but uh, neither one of the... Uh, actually, wow, right as I'm trying to say things about being passive-aggressive. Demon Lull is jumping in there. The slow goes off, but Dandin gets the twisted advance. So much damage going out on Maokai and Bloodwater. Both of them dropping down ridiculously low. Demon Lull is low as well, but Prolly's going to come in there, and he is going to be the game changer. Demon Lull actually dropping down to around 20 health before uh, he is changed. Uh, well, Fornat is chased out of there, so definitely really, really close. But uh, you can see every single time shenanigans go down bottom lane, Prolly is so fast at reacting to, to uh, just come down there along with Twisted Fate. Like, Twisted Fate teleports down there. It happens instantaneously. And to have the wherewithal, the mindset to be able to anticipate that and to make it down there almost as fast as Twisted Fate without that ult, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I got to say, Prolly is really impressing me with his map presence and map awareness right now. He is going down to that middle bottom lane as as soon as he sees Twisted Fate ultimate pop above his head, I don't even think he's hesitating. He's just walking straight down to the bottom lane as soon as Twisted Fate pops at ultimate. He's going to have that little golden symbol above his head as soon as Twisted Fate's ultimate goes off. So it's a little bit of a dead giveaway, but still his reaction time is beyond ridiculous light speed fast right now. And that and Gangplank's ultimate are really turning around any of those ganks on bottom lane. Between Nunu ultimate and Gangplank ultimate, I think Fornot took out more damage over all four characters on the bottom lane than they actually laid onto Demunlal, despite him getting all the way down to 20 HP. So brilliant, brilliant job of counter ganking and keeping their bottom lane alive. As that Gray is currently looking at his farm, he has 76 farm to Caitlyn's 87. So he is getting a little bit pushed around in CS and they definitely don't want him being pushed around as in being killed in the bottom lane on top of all of that. 
Yeah, so there was a little bit of a contestation around this uh, dragon guy over here, but speaking of things being done at light speed, that is going to be the first <laughs> dragon of the game for Team Legion. And uh, if you guys don't know, Fortnite and Legion kind of have a history back when it was Reflex. They definitely played against one another for a lot of gopher lols and in a lot of just regular online tournaments. And I believe, if I'm correct, Legion has a winning record against Fortnite. So uh, that could play into a little bit of what we see here, or we could see the upset and uh, see four not uh, bringing that uh, ratio back into their favor. It's still three and three as far as kills are concerned, and even with that dragon going to the Legion, it's still only a 200 gold difference, 100 gold difference in the uh, the gold count. So things just about as even as they could possibly get, and uh, that means we're gonna push it to late game and see who did the better job with their picks and bans starting out this game. And uh, if you had to, you know, use your clairvoyant optimist ways, uh, which would you? Uh, which team do you see uh, coming out ahead? I don't know right now. I know Fortnite is being extremely aggressive, but in my Optimus foresight, I can only say that Legion is definitely ahead in the countering game right now. As you see, Bloodwater just being so angry he can't pick up a kill on that Graves that he pounds the ground for absolutely no reason. Just <laughs> out of pure frustration. They're probably a little bit of a misclick. But, uh... Definitely going to say that Legion is doing a great job on those counter ganks and being wherever Fornot thinks that they aren't going to be at that time. So if they can continue to have the foresight to keep counter ganking those ganks and being where Fornot doesn't want them to be, basically, I think they're going to have a very, very strong presence in the late game, especially once that rise starts dishing out so much damage and gets super, super tanky. He has his Catalyst and Tier of Goddess, as we mentioned earlier before, and he is going to be working his way up towards things like Frozen Heart and Banshee Dale, making himself super tanky. But speaking of Tanky that Alistar has now popped his ultimate on the bottom as they are going for a kill onto Reaper once again. Dan Dan a little late to the party though he was not able to grab the Twisted Avenge onto Reaper so he will fall back behind his tower and be okay for now but with three people and a very large creep wave coming down, Fornot might be looking to tower dive this one if they don't see the Shivana coming up. Shivana with a foresight to get an Oracle's Elixir though does take out that ward and in doing so forces Fornot to fall back so no more three man pressure against Graves and Nuno on this bottom lane and any hope for a tower dive seems to be lost. Yeah, Dr. Trevor was definitely thinking about those turret dives, but uh, I'm not sure if actually going in that deep under turret is exactly what he wants to do. He got a little bit of a favorable trade, but uh, by this point in the game, between the Philosopher's Stone and Double Doran's gangplank, he's going to be able to sustain relatively well. He doesn't have anything crazy like a Wriggles, but uh, you just see how powerful Turtle Stance is uh, as Udyr just continues to work down Wings of Death, who's forced to pot up and really can't dish out the same damage that Dr. Trevor has going on. No, definitely not, and that is actually paying, actually it's not even paying off in the farm, Is Gangplank doing an excellent job against last hitting in, on his tower, being pushed back all the way, that Uder though, that's going to let him just place wards and kind of roam around a little bit, we haven't really seen Dr. Trevor lead the comfort of the top lane, whereas Wings of Death has been able to contribute to the rest of his team by popping down those Gangplank ultimates, unfortunately he hasn't gotten any assist out of all those for some reason, so just pretty much even up top lane and just looking at the creep score gangplanks ahead by about 10 or 12 CS so he is going to be a little bit ahead in that lane despite taking so so much damage from that Udyr and as you said going for double Doran to so try to lay a little bit more damage down instead of the Wriggles Lantern sustain just not really having an effect once that Udyr has maxed out turtle stance first and is now slowly approaching level 5 tiger stance that can be a lot of damage and a lot of sustain from Udyr out of that top lane when I don't think gangplank really has anything to contest that right now because he is a little more reliant on his items at this point. Yeah, level 5 Tiger Stance deals about 450 damage over time, over about 2 seconds, and that's just not something that Gangplank has any way to mitigate. You know, sure, he's going to get the mana regen, which is going to allow him to use his oranges as much as he wants, but uh, I don't, still don't think that's going to be enough to counter all of the harassment from Udyr. He heals about 50 off of every auto attack, so uh, both of the junglers are rolling around here in the mid lane, and uh, we could see a lot of action coming on there. That is a bad kitty, just bit me right there, so uh, <laughs> as... Uh, uh, top lane, we're going to see uh, Dr. Trevor going hard in the paint. He's diving underneath the turret. He is actually between turrets right now, signaling uh, the rest of his team to kind of go up there and give him a little bit of a hand. Loud Mortis is going to roll around top lane as Udyr is just so dominant, getting the turret down to about half health. And already you can see the Gangplank stacking up that uh, GSB on Dr. Trevor. He's going to roll around over to the bush. He's looking for Loud Mortis, who is just spotted there, clearing out that ward. So the Oracle's on Loud Mortis definitely paying off so far. And he walks back into his jungle 
angle, checks his blue buff, and then rolls right back around. But Dan Din has the foresight to come up there and uh, will actually find Lattimore's in the bush. This is going to be too odd to action. Dr. Trevor's going to get jumped off with the twisted advance, and the game play goal finally comes off there. Dr. Trevor is dropping dangerously low right now, and uh, without some assistance from Dan Din, Dr. Trevor will fall down. Wings of Death will take that, but Kramer 121 teleports top lane like a good twisted fate and picks up the counter kill. So it is four to four right now. And uh, 17 minutes into the game, there's still only a 300 gold difference. Yeah, but uh, this difference might be made up here by Shravana popping an ultimate. Looked like they wanted to go for a tower dive. Exhaust came out too. Rise off bottom was lane up. Gets a very nice room prison down on Dan Din's Maokai. Ignite is ticking down, but this tree is not going to succumb to the forest fires. He is going to walk out of there with a health potion procced up and be A-OK. -okay. This is going to prompt Lana Mortis to Shivano to go back, hopefully complete those Mercury Treads and start on a different item to get some real damage down onto that Shivano build. This rise is a little bit slower in his reaction time once Twisted Fate decided to go up to the top lane. As he mentioned, they're more normally going to the bottom lane from that aggression being put on by that range of Caitlyn and the aggressive headbutt pulverized combo from Alistar. So Twisted Fate was able to nab himself a nice little kill on the top lane, but Ryze really making up a little bit of a difference, pushing them back out after only one kill. And like you said, evened up at 18 minutes into this game. Gold counts, only a couple hundred gold difference. No towers have been taken, and the kill count is dead even. As well, you mentioned, both these teams playing with each other for a very, very long time, whether it be tournaments, scrim matches, or just, you know, for replays and awesome kind of little show match things. Just they know each other inside and out, but the deciding factor could be picking up Dan Din in the jungle. His Legion might not know his play style as much, especially with Fornaught. Yeah, that's definitely uh, going to be uh, something that uh, Legion has to watch out for just because he is new. Although he is, is he's notable because everybody's been watching him. He's a very prominent member as the leader of Epic. But the uh, second dragon of the game actually going to Legion. But Reaper is dropping down there super low at about 250 health. That is going to signal for not to go in on the hunt. Not the Sivir ult, but rather the entire T of their team. It looks like Twisted Fate could opt to actually teleport behind there. But uh, I think it's going to run out. So yeah, no teleport there from Twisted Fate. Fate onto the rest of the enemy team. He's just going to go back up to mid lane and like to push this lane into the turret and finally pick up the first turret of the game for four not. That will be uh, turret number one taken at about 19 minutes. And that is going to keep them that couple hundred gold ahead despite <laughs> uh, Legion getting that second dragon of the game. 20 minutes in the game though, Dr. Trevor laying the pain down onto Wings of Death. He's going to pick up another turret. So now we see things slowly starting to go into four not's favor as Dr. Trevor just continuing the relentless assault onto Wings of Death. Gangplank. He really can't even do anything. His tower is down. Dr. Trevor is just sustaining himself so well at that turtle stance. He got him to about half HP, but now he's almost back up to full just because of the health and mana restore on turtle stance. Yeah, now Dan Din was getting jumped on there by Shivana, but now the Bloodwaters come in here. He's gonna actually twist the defense in there, and the ult from Parole picks up the kill. So that is the uh, pretty much the first kill difference that we've seen this entire game at 20 minutes. Finally, it looks like Fornot is taking a little bit of a lead. They are up about uh, 1,600 gold, but uh, still nothing insurmountable. But uh, excellent teamwork there. Dan Din got caught in the jungle, got caught clearing out of ward, and a lot of more just really wanted to pressure that. But uh, was not able to as the rest of Fornot just collapsed around Lata Mortis and uh, picked up the kill with the Kalen ult as it looks like the third turret of the game could go to Fornot here as well and there it goes a minion taking that down increasing the gold lead to about 3000 right now yeah, now Fornot seems to be really starting to run away with this game. They had that, uh, they didn't even really have that much of an early game advantage, but that Caitlyn's farm was above grade. She is still currently about four, thir about 39, 40 CS ahead of Graze, doing some quick math and seeing how many more kills Graze and Caitlyn are going to be racking up before they decide to back off of each other in this lane. Caitlyn and everybody looking to see if they're going to be donating a blue buff over to Twisted Fate. But like I said, there's not even an early advantage, but just riding the small advantage that they had. This top lane obviously going in favor of Udir, as we saw game playing a little bit earlier, coming in just refreshed from the fountain trying to nuke down that Udyr, but then Udyr just really sustaining himself almost at full HP and melting Gangplank down to about half. He had to fall back. So these champion selections from Fauna are starting to make their presence known and starting to make the difference as we approach the 21-ish minute mark of the game right now. And right now, Legion's going to be the one that's going to have to do something to come back into it, but getting ganked on top by Twisted Fate Ultimate is not the way to come back as Wings of Death has to pop a Gangplank Ultimate. Twisted Fate still has his pick a card up. A gold card goes down. Dr. Trevor is going to land the Tiger Stance to finish off that game playing and that is another kill now ever increasing the small lead that Fornot has to really start spiraling this game into their favor and out of the control of Legion.
Yeah, now speaking of the control of Legion, Lattimore's actually walks out of the bush. Bloodwater would have walked right into that bush, and then probably and Lattimore's probably would have been able to pick up the kill there, but uh, a little bit over eager as Lattimore steps on out of there, and that will force both Prawley and uh, Shivana to back out of uh, the top lane. They were attempting something uh, in the form of a counter gank, but uh, nothing doing there, and they will be forced back. It is a, finally a two-kill advantage uh, between the teams. It's still really close, and you know, saying, "Oh my goodness, what a, what a major lead!" There's there's two kills difference. <laughs> I don't know. This could go wildly in favor of one team or another. I'm not sure it's quite at that point yet, but uh, I don't know. We're gonna see what happens. Uh, we do see uh, the you know big objectives starting to be warded. There is a ward for mm, Team Legion at uh, the Baron buff. So they do want to keep an eye out on what's going on up there. A lot of wards actually top jungle for uh, for Team Legion. And if we go ahead and check out exactly what they can see, they have wards bottom lane in the tribrush, wards around the Baron buff, and uh, pretty much the same situation for Four Knots. So uh, definitely uh, looking to accomplish the same things. And uh, looks like Josh Trevor's going to run around behind Wings of Death. Gangplank could be in a little bit of trouble, but the rest of Four Knot is rolling up around the top lane first. And it uh, looks like Dr. Trevor is getting a lot of damage onto Gangplank. Like he's getting dropped down there and the old actually will come off from Kaelin picking up the kill! Oh man, and Legion is just nowhere to be seen in supporting of Wings of Death. Right now they are currently occupied in the middle lane, and Caitlyn's ultimate with that ridiculous range on it is able to snag a kill. And now they have a 4 versus 5 as Dan is going to twist it advantage down on the Reaper, getting extremely low, not able to do anything, gets an Ice Blast off, it is going to barely save him, but now they've fallen onto Lord of Mortis, so he is going to fall, but Gray is finally able to pick up a kill onto Dan Dan, but they are still 4 versus 3 strong right now, and there is only 3 very damaged champions on the side of Legion, as 4 not increasing their lead to 8 but falling back a little bit as Legion picks up a kill to make it 5. Now about a 4k gold advantage so things like you said not a huge difference where it's just big big gaping lead and Fortnite's gonna run away with this game but look at the small advantages developing into a gank on top lane, a kill in the middle and now the fourth tower in the game whereas Legion has not taken down a single one so Fortnite riding the small advantage into map presence into map control and tower advantage and they are looking pretty pretty healthy right now in this third game. Yeah, I, they were looking so healthy. I think they could have opted to turn around and go do Baron, but uh, definitely uh, not a safe objective by any means. So a uh, good job by Fournat just to uh, go ahead and take the safe option to uh, push down yet another turret. And that's uh, probably one of the hardest turrets to get is the secondary mid turret. So Zeke's Herald is actually the pickup for Gangplank. I'm not sure I've seen that on too many Gangplanks. Uh, it has definitely been changed since it was in its Stark's iteration. But uh, here comes the counter push from Fournat. A lot of more gets shrunk down to about half health by parole and so that's going to mean that he's not going to be able to do the the super tankings as he does not even have his ult available wings of death pops his uh, move speed buff and then turns around but i'm not sure if legion really wants to fight this gold card is locked on kramer one two one and if that goes off it's definitely going to signal an initiate from bloodwater dr trevor and dan din i think there's awesome team communication you've really seen that with the twisted fate ganks and with pretty much everything uh you know synchronizing the caitlin ults and uh definitely a lot of damage going down there. Wings of Death Force, they heal up. And uh, I don't know how you see this team fight going as it starts to transpire. It looks like that Demonlaw is going to melt down that Caitlyn. Now Dan Din is trying to get in there, but he's going to get stuck in a new new ult. That is going to slow him down. Demonlaw, look at the sustain. Three kills in this fight. Four kills. And he's going for the pentakill. No, Gameplank gets the pentakill kill. But still, an ace coming out of Legion. I didn't see that at all. Did you? Oh my goodness, Demon Lull dropped down there to about 2 health, and then thanks to an awesome Nunu ult, he was just able to get to the very back of his team, such an awesome tank wall in front of him, and everybody just was like, oh my goodness, this guy has 2 health, I have to kill him now, <laughs> and neglected things like a Nunu ult, which got up to about halfway channeled, and also, oh wait, the incredible damage coming out of Prawley's Rise, it was just basically that spell machine gun that Riot remade him to be, so after turning that around, it looks like things are back to perfectly even. Still a little bit of a gold lead, and uh, to counter that, the kill advantage for uh, for a legion. But I don't know. With four turrets down, the, it's going to be really rough. All Team Four Not has to do is to sacrifice their turrets down to wait off this uh, this Baron buff, and uh, it's still looking like anybody's game. Dragon will be picked up here by uh, Dandan Dan and Parole, and so that's going to give. 
For an idea, a little bit of uh, gold to solve their wounds, but uh, with the way that team fight went, we can only hope to see something a little bit better once the next team fight rolls around. That was just absolutely insane. I did not see that coming out of anywhere, and I thought Graves was going to fall, but he picked up the kill on Caitlyn and then just ran through that Nuna ultimate, like you said. Oh man, that was excellent, excellent coordination from Legion, and despite them having, you know, Technically two substitutes in this game. That is just unheard of coordination as Fortnite though, is doing the best job that they can Like you said, they will have to sacrifice those turrets So they went off and picked up a dragon. They're going through and clearing out their jungle So they're securing every ounce of gold that they can get because if they do have to sacrifice these turrets in a fight or flight Situation against Legion who currently has four out of its five members with a Baron buff Which is going to be deadly in these pushing and team fight situations They're going to be donating a lot of gold to Legion and they ha currently have about a 2.5k gold cushion in their favor right now to allow them to do that. So giving up some map presence, securing the global objective like Dragon and their buffs and their jungle. This is going to, like I said, give them that little bit of cushion where if there's a fight at this tower right here, they get to sit back, poke, and then fall back like we're going to probably see them doing as Legion takes down a tower because they still have a four tower to one advantage. Yeah, and that's where that pushing strategy and taking those early turrets is really coming back to help them as they're just going to fall back, wait out that Baron buff. It is about halfway gone, so only a couple more minutes left. And uh, once that you know goes away, I think we're going to see a lot more of an even game. Uh, Wings of Death taking out that Caitlyn trap. And uh, with the next push of minions, it's going to attempt to be cleared out here. But actually, a lot of Morris is going to signal a jumping in there. He is taking turret, dropping down ridiculously low. Probably going to get out of that fight, but Reaper will pick up the kill on Dan Din. Kramer going down as well. Bloodwater is flashing out of there, but will not be enough. And now it is nothing but parole left to take out Reaper. But uh, with Lot of Morris and Wings of Death dangerously low, how did they get out of there with no help? That is ridiculous. It looks like Dr. Trevor will find Wings of Death waiting behind, but uh, he actually <laughs> flashes over the wall. The counter flash giving sight for the Caitlyn ult, which is blocked by Demon Low, but this dude here taking enough. No, probably just eats him alive. And now that he is dead, parole is left as the only surviving member of Four Not. So much bait. Oh I that my was God. <laughs> The positioning was ridiculous. The flash over the wall, the, the run into the Caitlyn ultimate to save Wings of Death. And now look how much HP he has from the level where he was, where he was about to get one shot by a Caitlyn ultimate. But the real story of the game was Udyr was coming down here to try to take down this already below half health turret from Team Legion, prompting Demon Law to be like, hey, wait a second. One, two, three. There's a 4v5. Let's go in, guys. So all of a sudden, Legion dove in on that tower. They picked up a tower. They picked up an inhibitor turret. This middle inhibitor is now exposed. Their Baron buff probably going to expire within the next couple seconds, but they have now taken the bottom turret. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to make a push for a top turret or at least go back and buy right now. The gold advantage, the kill advantage, and the towers all evened up. Now, all of a sudden, when we said that Legion was looking to be in a really bad spot and they had to do something to react and push themselves back into this game, oh boy, Rapid, did they do something all right. And that's almost two aces and a straight push down to the enemy middle in middle inhibitor. I almost said Nexus, but they didn't go that far yet. We're not that far into the game. And like you said, now the gold counts, even though they're looking pretty much even, that one or one K and a couple bits of change gold advantage is now in Legion's favor, where it really hasn't been all game until this point. Man, he's still really close though, you know, there is still that, uh, you know, gold being about a thousand difference, but four kills advantage now for Team Legion, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, I haven't, I haven't been able to uh, come out with some sort of conclusion as, oh, well, this team is solidly ahead, and even though it looked like Legion has tipped things solidly in their favor, there's nothing that is going to keep Parole and uh, the rest of uh, Four Not from coming back in this game. It is so even right now. I, I just can't call it. I can't call it either, but it's very interesting to see that the Mumla, with all his kills and a lot of farm, has not been able to really get a Last Whisper yet, whereas this Caitlyn over here from Parole has a fan of Dancer, Bloodthirster, and Last Whisper. Nobody on either team has opted to get an Infinity Edge right now. They are going for the straight, what I like to call, anti-tank build as they're getting Last Whisper, so those armor penetration, and they're really just going to melt each other down. We see that 4 Not Dan Din now has his Frozen Heart, so that's going to be slowing down attack speed from the physical damage of Legion, but to counter that, oh, he actually doesn't have it yet. Rise, Prolly's Rise does not have his Frozen Heart, rather keeping it a Glacial Shroud and opting for more sustain through a Banshee's Veil. He has a Hextech Revolver and a Giant's Belt. So very interesting to see that uh, Fornot has the Frozen Heart, whereas Legion does not. So that could be the reason why uh, 
I'm sorry, that could be the reason why Damunlal's Graze is really not... Do well, he's doing a bunch right now as he has gone back and picked up his Infinity Edge, but hopefully nerfing the amount of damage he could deal in team fights right now. Yeah, but look at what Graves is doing. He's built two aura items in Aegis and Zeke's Herald. So he's definitely going to be assisting his team with not only those two buffs, but also his uh, raise morale as well. So that's definitely going to be a lot of offensive and defensive auras going on uh, for uh, for Team Legion. On the other hand, you do have auras from, uh, actually there's no Aegis yet, but uh, they do, like you said, have that uh, frozen heart Already on Dan Din, who's just using his ult to do a little bit of AoE clears, trying to push things in their favor. But it looks like the rest of Legion know the respawn timer for Baron. They're going to go up there. They're going to throw down some wards. And it uh, looks like we'll just uh, be content to back on out of there. Dr. Trevor's a little bit split up from the rest of his team. He definitely needs to get on down there. I don't like his positioning right now, as if Legion goes in here and tries to contest this Baron buff, it's going to be really hard for four, uh, for. Dr. Trevor to get rid of West with the rest of his team and put together some sort of a cohesive front. And we did see last time when the team fight was going on what happened when Dr. Trevor tried to stay out of the fight and then sling around back for cleanup duty. There was nothing really to clean up because Legion was all in control of that 5 versus 4 fight. Gangplank though is coming down to clear the bottom lane though so this is going to prompt Dr. Trevor to do the same for the top lane just continuing to push down on either side of the map whereas one is on top and one is on bottom just kind of you know counteracting each other. Still three members from Fallen Up floating around towards the middle as Dan Din kind of just walk around clearing out those wards that Legion just pushed in there and tried their hardest to really lay down right now. But still, this is just that phase where it is the game of patience right now. Legion has a slight lead and they don't want to give it up. Fornot knows that Legion has a slight lead and they want to do something to turn the game back into their favor. Both teams making sure they move together and play extremely smart and this Baron buff is going to be a huge point of contention for when this waiting game finally ends rapid. Yeah, this is the waiting game. Like you said, this is going to be probably the last engagement of this game as any team that gets a sizable victory, any team that gets an ace and or a Baron buff is just going to be able to do so much damage to their opponents. You know, there is no inhibitor. This, I mean, no turret. This is an open inhib at, uh, you know, the opening to Four Knots middle lane. But, uh, you know, there are no turrets middle lane either for a Team Legion, just the one sitting at their nexus. And oh my goodness, Bloodwater gets chunked there, forces the flash out. Bloodwater, or Demon Lol, actually doing so much damage. Got a couple of crits there, 330 AD. And this will be the first inhibitor of the game as Demon Lol pretty much just says, Sub Sun, walking in your base, getting the kills off on those inhibitors. Heal goes off, and actually uh, for flashing out there. Kramer 121 bursting down. Demon lol, Crawley's doing the bursting on his end as well. The 1,000 damage uh, Gangplank ult going off there as well. Dan Din's dropping dangerously low. Wings of Death is actually slow as well. Will he be able to pick up the kill? Dan Din will go down there and with Bloodwater, Dr. Trevor, and Parole left alive. Crawley and Reaper are going to have to get out of there. The combine was so close. So much burst damage coming down from Twisted Fate who had his Lich Bane already completed in that plus the rest of his 368 AP. Just Busted up Demon Lol and just like chunked him in the face. You can see that he was critting back Twisted Fate as fast as he possibly can, but the burst day was just too strong. And that is why you put AP carries on your team because they, when left alive, can just burst down pretty much anything. And that is what Twisted Fate did best. Able to pick up that kill and really turn that team fight around. A lot of Morris and Demon Lol are, are, are already almost back up, but Reaper's actually getting dropped down low as well. Probably trying to pick up the kill. Our own Dr. Trevor will actually get the but will drop down there as well himself. Reaper will get picked up with the Caitlyn ult flashing over a ward. Tried to get out of sight range, but once that ult's on you, it definitely sticks there. Rise is actually picking up a Rylai's Crystal Scepter, which is a little bit interesting as Rise does not usually scale off of AP, but uh, definitely looking to be as tanky as possible. As uh, if you look at Rise, he has 126 over 132 as far as his defensive stats are concerned. Already up at almost 3,000 health. And oh my goodness, Tom, this is shaping up to be quite the game. It's constantly back and forth, and I was wondering what Reaper and Prolly were doing at that point, trying to contest that Baron 2 versus 3, but being able to pick up a kill on Udrit became clear they just wanted to deny that Baron buff from Fornot, did not want them getting the buff on 3 of their 5 active members, and did not want that global gold going to them. As we can see right now, that Fornot has come back and has a little bit of a gold advantage, but 
Legion has the inhibitor down. They have a kill advantage. The towers are still pretty much even. I'd like to point out in that fight that um, the bottom lane between Twisted Fate and Wings of Death's Gangplank was a little bit of a fight between each other. That was what prompted the little engagement on the middle lane and prompted the Mundal to really run in there and start bursting down the inhibitor and almost bursting down the Alistar in two or three quick little critical strikes. But that Twisted Fate ultimate let him go in behind where Damon Law was trying to run away to and melted him down, completely obliterating any hope for the AD carry to live in that fight. Gangplank had to pop a teleport after popping the ultimate first, so that let him get to the fight a little bit too too late and it swung in favor of Forna. But now with this inhibitor down, this Baron is still up to be contested. I still gotta give it to the favor of Legion, even though they are behind, you know, that permanent 1.2k or 1.5k gold advantage or disadvantage we had throughout this entire game so far man i don't even know what to say it's been so close all game long but i think that taking out that inhibitor is gonna start to swing things in favor of legion you know it's been back and forth and after aces on pretty much both sides we're gonna see uh, probably you know i said that next ace was gonna be you know the deciding factor of the game definitely was a little bit off there as uh you know i didn't exactly estimate exactly how far ahead legion was but uh with that counter ace at the inhibitor it's gonna be brought back to even and it's 27 all right, four towers to four towers, and here comes the initiate from Dan Din. Bloodwater popping in there and gets the headbutt off. Reaper dropping down there almost immediately, but gets a little bit of it all going off. Parole just dishing out the damage from behind. Demon Law on the other side is doing exactly the same thing. Dan Din trying to sustain as long as he possibly can. Will finally fall down, but Bloodwater, Kramer, and Parole are all going to go in here onto probably. Will it be enough damage? Prob Parole is going to pop his ult there. Will it be enough damage in time? Yes, it will. Twisted Bait popping his ult. Where will he go? He's going to teleport behind Demon Law and pick up the ace on the inner turret! Oh my gosh, that fight just went so in favor of Forna. Positioning the Shrelias and counter Shrelias, all in favor of Forna, and they might have a push straight down to win right now. Shivana is down for 26 seconds. Reaper is going to be up in 10 seconds. That is a support in Nunu. They are definitely going to get this inhibitor up. They are so low, they have to go back. Parole right now making up such a huge difference. As Caitlyn looks untouched in that fight. 358 base DPS on top of headshot, on top of critical strikes out of that Infinity Edge. And Graves with 311, he really can't match the power of a Caitlyn headshot. And that engagement, there was, I was about to say before we got into the team fight, this was such a bad place to start a team fight. There were walls all over, there were bushes, there were brushes. Look how many wards are placed in this one area alone just to get vision in team fights and of each other when they do the little dance of death over by Baron as a five man composition. And that just favored the Caitlyn so so much as she was able to really utilize that range the ultimate the poke from the Piltover Peacemaker and she just came out ahead in that fight like I said not even a scratch on her as Graves really had to fight for his life the sustain from his life leech being the one thing that kept him alive up until the end where Twisted Fate was able to really teleport down and pick up a kill on him and even though you think it would favor Rise and probably with that ultimate bouncing back and forth between everybody Reaper's ultimate was not able to last as long as it has in previous team engagements he died making sure that the Law did not have that constant buff from Blood Boil, making his DPS suffer tremendously because of it. And the picking up of a kill on Lotta Mortis early in the fight left them pretty much tankless as they were exposed and in a very bad position. And for not, like I said, Legion seemed to have a little bit of a lead. The inhibitor has respawned, the lead is gone, and now for not has that gold lead, has the kill lead, and towers are still even. But this is going to be anybody's game with the track record we'd have so far, Rapid. I'm not making any bets on this one anymore. Man, I'm definitely calling the prepubescent Tom as this last team fight uh, <laughs> rolls around. I'm definitely going to let you take care of that because uh, I'll be inter as interested to hear that as everyone else will be, I'm sure. But uh, as it looks like we are rolling up around that team fight, I definitely am going to have to give a little bit of an advantage to Fortnite. If you go ahead and look at Caitlyn's item, she has no defensive items you know she has those uh, berserker screens is walking working on already has her second phantom dancer sitting at almost two attack speed that's gonna essentially double her dps making it around what is that 700 damage per second that's ridiculous there's nothing you can do to mitigate that as she does have that less whisper as well graves going for the qss and actually also has a doran's blade so he is nowhere near the same level of attack damage carry that uh, for not actually has so that's really going to turn this team fight around. Look at how fast Barrett goes down. It is almost dead, and uh, we will see it finally fall for not picking that up, and that will be a sizable advantage. The Shirelius is popped by Dandin. He's like, hey guys, you want to go in here and flash and get
gets the twisted advance off Loud of Mortis is not really who you want to be focusing immediately, but he will drop down almost instantaneously while the rest of the team is being led by Dr. Trevor Craver coming down following Dan Din's lead. Reaper will fall immediately, and oh my goodness, this could be the end of what has been one of the closest games I have ever cast. This is indeed, but that Gangplank was down on the bottom. He was nowhere around that Baron. He was nowhere around that team fight. And that could be lights out for Legion right now. As Fortnite is falling down these Nexus turrets, a flash out from probably is not going to be enough. Caitlyn is legendary, Rapid. Legendary. They haven't touched her almost all game. 13 and 2. That is going to carry Fortnite to a victory against Legion. Not only a victory against Legion, but a victory into the round of 8. They are going to go up against Goose after an amazing game here in the GG Classic. Oh my god, it was back and forth, it was back and forth, and you can't argue that that was a... <laughs> well played there, Optimus Tom. Very well played. And uh, definitely a good game to both teams. I have... I, I don't even know. I have never seen a game that close up until the very end. But oh my goodness, that Caitlyn, like I said, definitely turned that team fight around, going 13 and two. I I don't know. I how do you do that? Show me the way. And apparently, <laughs> Parole is uh, is capable of doing that by uh, showing us awesome games like that. The DPS she was putting out was unparalleled. I I I just can't even understand underestimate or overstate that was the word I was looking <laughs> for uh, exactly how big parole was that team by but also not to mitigate the CC that I talked about at the beginning of the game Dan Din and Bloodwater so many disables that really just took things like Rise and Demon Lull out of those last couple of fights you really just saw even Twisted Fate get in on the action as a Kramer 121 teleporting behind uh, Demon Lull taking him out of a couple of fights and just oh my goodness such awesome play by both teams it was such a back and forth game. That is the definition of good game. When someone a when you say GG and someone asks you what that is, send them a link to this VOD because that is what we just witnessed rapid. As we said, Fortnite is going to be advancing into the round of eight. That means that they are going to be going against NTWNA, formerly known as Team A Picture of a Goose. That is going to be tomorrow afternoon starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 9 a.m. Pacific Time for any of you guys on the West Coast. Of course, it's far too... It's actually not that... Uh, late at night for you guys over in Europe and in, in addition to that but that is going to be casted by myself and Ponophobia so I actually can't wait for that huge MDWNA fan and after what the uh, 4 Not team has shown me in this game I am looking forward to that game to be another example of what good game could be rapid man 